So I'm out here in Miami, Florida, and there's a storm coming up. It's getting absolutely crazy. And in this video, I want to talk about what JP Morgan CEO, Jamie Dimon, just did because he just issued a dire worst case scenario warning for the markets. And we're going to talk about that in this video where, you know, Bitcoin, other major cryptocurrencies, you know, including you got Ethereum, XRP, the top 10, even the top 100, they're currently braced for a nightmare Federal Reserve price scenario, but it's not what you think. So we're going to talk about some big news about what's happening with the SEC, uh, spot Bitcoin ETFs, like I talked about yesterday, where Gary Gensler got grilled in Congress. Uh, Mr. Gensler, is it fair to say generally that large institutions in any given industry benefit more from regulatory uncertainty than everyday market participants or smaller institutions who don't have the scale or the capital to fund expensive compliance teams? Uh, reclaiming my time. The answer is yes, sir. And what's happening now with the SEC and crypto and also some breaking news for Ripple for XRP that you're not going to want to miss. So comment 777 if you're feeling blessed, if you're feeling bullish, and if you're going to become the first millionaire in your family tree, you know what to do. Confirm it by tapping that subscribe button. Give it a tippity tap a -roo. Just sink the putt. Don't worry about it. You're still in good shape. All you got to do is just tap it in. Just tap it in. Tap it in. Just tap it in. Give it a little tappy. Tap, tap, tap. Do it for grandma. As always, we're going to beat Shooter McGavin. We're buying grandma's house back with XRP. Let's run it. All right, bull runners, welcome back to the channel. So the crypto markets, after rallying through the first half of this year, for the first six months, even while the Federal Reserve raises the effective federal funds rate, it's lost some momentum right now, you know, with Bitcoin weighing on XRP, weighing on Ethereum and the wider crypto market. But XRP is rallying right now at the time of making this video. And this is due to the anticipation of a major announcement with the party that's happening right now over in New York. Uh, the major announcement, there's speculation about Ripple IPOing, potential settlement with the SEC, some potential new product announcements. So we'll keep you up to date on what's happening over there because New York is quite literally getting hit with that on-demand liquidity right now from Ripple with all these videos of the flooding over there. And so it begins. It was the end of times in New York City. Thanks to Mayor Adams, Joe Biden, Yo, Donald Trump, and Barack do? Obama. Deeper, it's actually getting deeper, bro. How the f am I supposed to get across this? Are you fing serious? So as we get ready for the announcement that's taking place tonight, Jamie Dimon, the chief executive at JP Morgan Chase, the largest bank in America and one of Epstein's private clients, has warned that people should prepare for a worst case Fed scenario. And in this video, I'm going to talk about what that means that could spur a rally in Bitcoin and a rally in crypto and what Chase is also doing over in UK, banning crypto. So I'm not sure if the world is prepared for a 7% interest rate. That's what Jamie Dimon told the Times of India after Fed Chair Jerome Powell last week warned that he was prepared to keep raising interest rates if necessary to stamp out inflation. Now, right now that rates are paused with people expecting one more rate hike this year and the future, we're gonna talk about what the future looks like for rate hikes and what that looks like for the rest of the markets. And he said that I asked people in business, are you prepared for something like 7%? And the worst case is 7% effective federal funds rate with stagflation. If they're going to have lower volumes at higher rates, then there will be massive stress in the system, Jamie Dimon said. And they're urging their clients to be prepared for that kind of stress. So what are you doing to prepare? I'll share with you what I'm doing to prepare. Obviously, it's not financial advice, but based on the data that I'm gonna drop with you in this video, you'll see why I'm preparing this way. Now, it's very interesting how Chase Bank is banning crypto link payments via debit cards or by outgoing bank transfers for their UK clients starting on October 16th. And Chase said that it was banning crypto payments because of fraudsters, you know, are increasingly using crypto assets to steal large sums of money from people. But it's all pre-planned, guys. You know, they're using terms like illicit activities for, you know, illegal money laundering, terrorist, terrorist financing, right? Illegal gambling to scare 
retail investors so they don't want to or they can't invest in crypto. You know, if you can't scare people to not invest in crypto because they are not buying it, then the only other option is to legitimately try and block them from buying crypto. And meanwhile, Chase is taking your money, they're loaning it out to other customers at high interest rates, and they're only keeping a fraction of your money in reserve. And Chase, they released their first quarter revenue and it rose by 25% to $39.34 billion, driven by a 49% rise in net interest income to $20.8 billion, thanks to the Federal Reserve's most aggressive rate hiking campaign in decades. So shares of the bank rose 7.5%, and that is the biggest upside move on an earnings report in more than 20 years years. And this is according to Bespoke Investment Group, guys. So the Fed's rapid series of interest rate hikes from near zero, you know, during the COVID pandemic and the massive quantitative easing that they were ushering in since they shifted to QT to just over 5% particularly triggered a banking crisis earlier this year and has 10-year U.S. Treasury yield, yields, which are the benchmark of global borrowing costs, above 4.6% for the first time since 2007, up from 4% at the start of September. So soaring bond yields have weighed on the stock market in recent weeks, wiping out the recent gains made by the Dow, Jones Industrial Average, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ indices. And so the world is certainly not prepared for a 7% federal funds rate. You know, Charlie Jamison, who's the chief investment officer at Jamison Coop Bonds, told Bloomberg. And at that level, we would expect there to be a deflationary asset unwind. It would burst a lot of asset bubbles. It just simply wouldn't be sustainable for the rest of the economy. We would see, you know, potentially more bank runs and catastrophes unfolding for retail investors. That would drastically affect retail investors. You see Chase making money, you know, by loaning out the money and benefiting from these interest rate hikes. Well, the interest rate hikes would damage people that want to buy real estate. That's why in one of my previous videos, I said the Fed has destroyed uh, millennials' ability to buy a home and it's going to get worse. You have to be ready. So former BitMEX chief executive and legendary crypto trader Arthur Hayes has predicted the Bitcoin price could pump if the Fed keeps raising interest rates. So, and this is proven to be true because for the first half of this year, the crypto market rallied even when the Fed continued to hike rates. And so the warning for the markets is really for traditional markets like stocks because the stock market you know, is resembling the pre-1929 crash that I talked about in a previous video on the channel when you subscribe. And it's not a matter of if, it's just a matter of when and how large that crash will be. So the real question is, how would a massive stock market crash how would a massive implosion you know, in traditional investments affect crypto or would crypto completely decouple from the stock market? You know, Would crypto be impacted? Would crypto crash with the markets? Massive institutions, they are preparing by applying for spot ETFs to give their clients an alternative hedge into the crypto market, specifically with Bitcoin spot ETFs. And so after Gary Gensler testified before Congress and was absolutely destroyed, and it was just verbally abused in all the right ways, right? BlackRock, Invesco, Bitwise, Valkyrie were all hit with delays. They got delayed by the SEC for the decision on the spot Bitcoin ETF approval. And then Fidelity, Venek, Wisdom Tree, they're also expected to be pushed back by the SEC. So what to look for here is the next deadline is October 17th is when the SEC would make another decision on that. Now, if the SEC delays the decision, which they probably will, Again, the third set of deadlines for the seven firms is around mid-January of 2024, and they could also be delayed. So the SEC will have to make a final decision by mid-March of 2024 at the very, very latest, which is six months away. So what I'm expecting is them to make that decision six months from right now, um, potentially sooner. It could happen sooner. So don't expect them to decide until they absolutely have to. And the reason why is because the powers that be behind the scenes that are purposefully, you know, working with Gary Gensler, maybe they're paying the guy off. I don't know. Can't confirm or deny that. But it seems to be pretty obvious that someone's behind the scenes, like forcing him to purposefully delay, delay a decision in these markets. So I just find it interesting how they have to decide in March is the last and final day. And just one month later, by April 25th, is Bitcoin's halving event. So historically, 
after Bitcoin's halving, we have seen massive price appreciation according to Bitcoin's stock to flow model. You can see that every time that Bitcoin halves, the following 12 months are massively bullish and the markets absolutely rip. So how would this affect XRP? Well, XRP's rally right now is obviously in lights in light of the excitement that's happening right now over the New York party coming from a surge in leverage trading activity with over 1 million leverage transactions accounting for a little over 1% of the total transactions on the XRP ledger today out of about 116 million total. And XRP displayed the highest buying pressure relative to its market cap compared to you know Ethereum or Bitcoin trailing in this regard. So this isn't financial advice. Again, don't buy, don't sell anything in the crypto market. This is for educational purposes only and example purposes only. But I personally expect XRP to outperform Bitcoin and Ethereum the next couple years leading up to Bitcoin's having and even after Bitcoin's having. Sure, there will be periods where Bitcoin will rip, you know, the spot Bitcoin ETF. People aren't going to be buying altcoins. They're going to be buying Bitcoin, but then that money would flow from Bitcoin into the alt altcoin space. So when I talk about XRP outperforming Bitcoin or Ethereum, I'm talking on a macro time frame over the course of years, not just in like a week period or a month period when you average it all out. And it's not even a question of if XRP will outperform the US dollar or other fiat currencies. You know, when I when I talk with people about crypto and they're like, well, isn't crypto down? Isn't crypto seeing a sell off? And they just don't understand. They don't understand what's going on at all. They're like skeptical about putting money into crypto from the US dollar. So it's not even a question. And here's why. It's not even a question if XRP or the crypto market will outperform the US dollar or other fiat currencies of other countries over the next decade. Because when you look at this chart, you can see how other currencies have performed comparative to the US dollar over the last decade. So if you thought the dollar was doing bad, you have no clue, no idea how bad it is for other countries. So if you're just in the United States, you need to expand your mind to other countries. Look at Venezuela's currency. It has been experiencing the worst hyperinflation anyone has ever seen, over 65,000%. It's an absolute disaster over there. And then you look at all these other countries, it's not looking too hot. So you would have to have a legitimate mental illness to think that parking all of your money in fiat currencies in the US dollar and in the banks is a smart move simply because of some corrupt banker like Jamie Dimon or fake mainstream media news platforms run by BlackRock and other massive institutions who are applying for spot Bitcoin ETFs that are pushing narratives out there on the media to dumb retail investors for you to think, oh, it's risky to hold crypto because of terrorist financing. Oh no, the terrorists are going to get my money. Watch out for the weapons of mass destruction. Yeah, more like weapons of mass inflation. So in other news, in a recent press release, the National Bank of Georgia has shortlisted Ripple Labs alongside eight other firms as potential technology partners for its central banking digital currency pilot project, which is titled the Digital Gel. Now, back in 2022, Brad Garlinghouse held discussions in a meeting with Georgia's prime minister in Davos, Switzerland, and Ripple is reportedly in advance talks with nearly 30 countries and central banks regarding their CBDC solutions. Along these, Ripple's involvement in pilot stages with countries such as the Republic of Peru, Montenegro, Bhutan, Hong Kong, and Colombia has been confirmed and others are in the works right now that they just haven't announced publicly. So a lot of this stuff they're keeping behind the wraps, uh, they're keep keeping behind the curtains, and when they unveil the curtains, you're gonna see why I've been making videos about XRP every single day for the past few years. Even the head of digital assets at Citibank just said, it's not just a sitting token. We want to work with other banks like we've done on the regulated liability network with the Fed and other banks. Like clients don't want, you know, individual bank tokens. They want multi multi token, multi border liquidity to for added efficiencies. So if clients want multi border liquidity, how do you think banks like Citi, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, Chase even, and others are going to respond? Well, they're going to provide what their clients want because they want the market share and they need the money of their clients to keep functioning. So on-demand liquidity through distributed ledger technology. That's the future of banking. And Ripple is the main com company at the forefront of that. So 
because of all these partnerships are blatantly being shoved in our face right now. If you're not paying attention to it, subscribe to the channel right now. Like this video right now. Share this video with a friend right now. They need to see that because when you combine this news with SBI Remit, which is a longstanding partner of Ripple, they're expanding their presence in Japan by partnering with Shonen Shinking. I think I pronounced that right. It's a bank that offers international remittance services. Now, this is a big deal because Shonen Shinking Bank uh, operates a credit union serving foreign workers in Japan for receiving and sending payments to their home countries, as well as providing services to corporations. And this will assist foreign workers in sending remittances, particularly in the industrialized uh, Kanagawa uh, prefecture. I think I said it prefecture region. I think that's how you pronounce that. Sometimes I butcher these words. You don't even know how to read to make money. You just need to know where the money's moving. Okay, you don't gotta know how to read to make money. You just need to know where the money's moving. They have seen a significant increase in the number of foreign workers over the years. It's massive. So don't let these you know, weird names or my inability to read and pronounce or even speak English, my, my main language, I barely know how to read sometimes. Don't let it all confuse you or think it's just some third world area because this region is the fourth largest in Japan in terms of foreign worker population which has a lot of money. So the new remittance service will utilize Ripple's distributed ledger technology along with other financial technologies to offer a convenient, cost-effective, faster payment remittance service to foreign nationals in Japan when they're sending money around. So this partnership, it's marking another milestone in Ripple's collaboration with SBI, which dates all the way back to 2016, when they established SBI Ripple Asia, which is a joint venture exploring the use of XRP for international payments. And SBI has also demonstrated that the use of XRP for on-demand liquidity, their ODL remittances between Japan and the Philippines is promising a significantly faster international transfer compared to traditional methods with fiat currencies. So while the United States continues to drag its tail with regulation due to agencies like the SEC and corrupt banks that want to gatekeep retail investors from buying any cryptocurrencies, what I am doing to prepare is I'm getting the keys, I'm putting them in my truck, I'm turning the thing on, I'm backing it up, beep, 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 boom, all the way into the bank, I'm grabbing the bags, I'm packing them and stacking them, I'm leaving no bags left behind, and the reason why is because the spending power of the dollar continues to go down in value. That's a fact. It's even worse for other countries' fiat currencies. And blockchain technology, distributed ledger technology, cryptocurrencies are all going up in interest. That's the truth. Over the past decade and over the next decade, you have to be ready because together, we're all going camping on the beaches of the moon. I will see you on the next video. I will see you on bullrunners.com where we're gonna be launching our financial publication platform to give you the latest and greatest breaking news in the crypto and the finance industry because we give you the best to help you prepare for the worst that's yet to come in this economy. So as always, I will see you on the next video. I will see you on bullrunners.com. You know what to do? Stay bullish.